This is a thin film interference summary. So this summary works for nearly vertical rays. If they're at kind of too much of an angle, there's a little more to it. My drawings would be at quite a, a bit of an angle, but we're going to take it on as if light was coming in pretty much vertically. So I've got this soap film, basically a soap bubble. It's got air on the inside, air on the outside, and I've got the soap with some kind of thickness. The light ray is going to come in, it's going to reflect and refract, and then on the bottom it's going to reflect and refract again. And on the top you can see I have those two reflected, bouncing light rays, and they're going to interact with each other. In fact, one of them is going to travel farther than the other one, and the distance it's going to travel is twice the thickness of the soap film. But notice the variable using for the thickness of the soap film. It's not D or L or something that makes sense. It's T. And the only reason why you're using T is because everyone else seems to want to use T. Usually lowercase t is time, but in this case it means thickness. So twice the thickness of the soap film because the light goes down and then back up. And so I know that that's the path length difference. Twice the thickness is equal to m lambda, which is the path length difference. But notice that it, because it's the path length is in the film and not in the air or the vacuum, the wavelength is going to differ, and that's what's important. So I need to account for that. So I'll use the wave equation, c equals lambda f, and the index of refraction is c over the velocity in the medium, which means that the wavelength in the vacuum, or air, is the same, divided by the wavelength in the medium is equal to the index of refraction. When I rearrange that, the wavelength in the medium is equal to the wavelength in the vacuum, which is the same as air, divided by the index of refraction. Now I've got one more little hitch to this. Whenever a light ray goes from a low index to a high index, like from air to soap, I get a 180 degree phase change, or lambda over 2 phase change. Whenever a wave goes from a high index to a low, the opposite, I don't get a phase change. There's no phase change there. So because it's a phase change, usually we know when the path length is equal to m lambda, I get constructive interference, I get a bright spot. But here, because that lambda over 2 phase length, instead of a bright spot, I get a dark spot. In other words, I get destructive interference. So twice the thickness is equal to m lambda over n, and my orders are 0, 1, 2, 3, and that's destructive. So these are the frequencies that it's blocking out. And the frequencies that you see, constructive interference, would therefore be m plus a half. Now just, as, just so you know, there is an alternative format of writing this equation. You can multiply both sides by the index of refraction, and you get 2 nt is equal to m lambda, and 2 nt is equal to m plus a half lambda. But to me, this equation really doesn't tell the story of the fact that you have to change the wavelength in the substance, which is why it's lambda over m. Okay, let's look at a different situation. And this time I've got glass on the bottom, so I've got air, soap, sitting on top of glass. And you can see how my indices, indices of refraction have changed. So this is the equation that we had before. The light comes in, reflects and refracts, then reflects and refracts all the way down. And I'm going to ignore what happens as it leaves the glass, so the glass is as thick as I want it to be. But when it comes in, the first one, it's going from air to soap. So from low to high, that's going to give me a 180 degree phase change. And then when it goes from soap to glass, it does it again from low index, a lower index to a higher index. So I get a second 180 degree phase change. So now because I have two phase changes instead of just one, they essentially cancel each other out. So now instead of 2t is equal to m lambda over n being destructive, it becomes constructive. The same thing is true at the bottom, instead of m for the m plus a half equation, constructive interference turns into destructive interference. So you've got to remember when things are changing. To help summarize what's going on, I've got this little table. So I've got the equation, I've got my equation, also in the standard form, the 2nt is equal to m plus a half lambda. With one phase shift, you can see it's constructive. The two NTs, M lambda, one phase shift, destructive. And I've got a little picture down there to help, help you and show you kind of how it works with the phase shifts.